and welcome to Asian Pacific America. I'm Robert Honda, your host for our weekly show here on NBC Bay Area and Cozy TV. There are some significant historical dates coming up. The events can be painful to recall, but are also important enough not to ever forget. Our focus? The plight of immigrants. First, we examine the Chinese Exclusion Act. Through the exhibits and expertise of two groups, the Chinese Historical Society of America, the country's oldest organization dedicated to the contributions of Chinese in America and Save Our National Archives, a coalition that preserves an important part of history by fighting to prevent the destruction of so-called alien files. Next, Angel Island, the first stop for many immigrants crossing the Pacific. Joining us, a leader of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation with stories about people, including her own ancestors, who came to the U.S. during the era of exclusion. Then someone with a family story to tell and the historical expertise to put it in perspective for us. Our friend Connie Young Yu will talk about her grandmother's story and her unique fight to leave Angel Island to rejoin her family. Those stories and a look ahead at some big upcoming community events all on our show today. Well, next week there will be a historic date that many Asian Americans will take note of. It was May 6, 1882 when the Chinese Exclusion Act was signed into law by President Chester Arthur prohibiting all immigration of Chinese laborers and it was not repealed until 1943. Joining me now is Sue Lee of the Chinese Historical Society of America, executive director since 2004, credited with expanding the museum's appeal through groundbreaking exhibits and programs. She is also a former president of the San Francisco Planning Commission mission and has worked with five different mayors. Also with us is Jenny Liu, communications co-chair for SONA, Save Our National Archives. She was also director and producer of an award-winning documentary, Separate Lives, Broken Dreams, and at SONA led a coalition that rescued many priceless immigration documents. Thank you both for being here. Now, it's amazing how immigration themes can resonate in modern times. For people who aren't familiar with it, though, give us an idea in terms of how the Chinese Exclusion Act came about and why. Well, when Chinese first came to California, they were welcomed. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, they became a threat to labor. And so by 1882, there were thousands of Chinese in California helping to build this new state. Mm -hmm and the Transcontinental Railroad had been built, so it was easier for other immigrants to America to get to California. So the Chinese were targeted and their labor was no longer wanted. So there was a push to, to enact a specific law preventing Chinese laborers from immigrating to the U.S. Was it strictly it's, sort of a, like a you know reaction in terms of them being Asian uh, as opposed to like the numbers? I mean, why, why did they decide to take such an extreme action? I think it was actually a combination. It was the numbers. There were, as I said, there were thousands in California yeah. and they were everywhere. They were reclaiming farmland. They were building uh, roads. They were in, uh, they were laundry men, they were cooks, and other immigrants wanted those jobs. There was also a very vibrant industrial base, mm -hmm. and those laborers, those other immigrant workers didn't want to compete with the cheaper Chinese labor. It's amazing, too, because they had families, you know, they were disrupting communities by doing that, and yet for the government, it seemed like they were doing it just on the well, numbers. What's huh? significant about the Chinese Exclusion Act is it's the only immigration law that targeted a specific racial group. Jenny, you're an excellent documentary. You mm -hmm. talked about a number of different themes. One of them was sort of the mood of the country at that time that we're talking mm -hmm. about now, mm -hmm. as well as maybe the editorial attitude, you know, the, the mm -hmm. kind of public opinion uh, tidal wave that gets built when people want to push something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, give us an idea in terms of what it was like at that time, and was there anything that anybody could have done about it? Well, I think one of the reasons, well, let, let me say, before the Chinese Exclusion Act, in U.S. immigration history, the only people that were excluded were imbeciles, convicts, and lunatics, yeah. uh, people that were uh, a danger to the public. So it's interesting that they singled out Chinese Americans, but I think also because Chinese Americans as a group held on to their customs, their mm -hmm. culture. Um, because of racism, we were clustered into ghettos. So we were an ability to maintain um, our style of clothing, our uh, holidays, our language. And I think some people saw us as non-assimilating. Yeah, it's like actually, the cartoons that we yeah. used to see. It was always sort of picking on the way they looked, right? 
Right. So wet, um, as Sue mentioned, one of the biggest opponents because we were a threat um, to low-income wage earners. Uh, the labor unions, unfortunately, got jumped on the bandwagon with anti-exclusion. And uh, there's a lot of uh, references in the political cartoons of the sentiment that we were outsiders. We had the cues that we had to wear because of uh, it was a law in China that you could not return if you didn't have a cue under dynastic rule. Um, so we were easy targets. And we were talking about the fact that they were disrupting families, real people, real lives. Uh, your organization mm -hmm. going in and saving these immigration papers. What kind of documents were being saved and why was it so important that happened? Well, one of the benefits I can say to Chinese exclusion is we are probably the most over-documented -document, <laughs> immigration group in all of uh, U.S. history. Um, because there was exclusion, uh, only five exempt classes were allowed into the United States. They had to be merchants from China, clergy, students, uh, uh, foreign diplomats, am I repeating myself, mm -hmm. uh, or U.S. born citizens. So they devised a whole system of interrogations. Uh, they created camps, uh, one of which is Angel Island, which you'll cover later in your program, mm -hmm. um, to make Chinese immigrants uh, take uh, pass exams, you might say, interrogations, to prove that uh, they were one of these exam classes. Now, um, that creates a situation, for example, that my father, who came to Angel Island, he has a file that is over a quarter inch thick. So it has everything from marriage licenses to who his father was, where his father worked. They had um, Caucasian and other reputable witnesses to report on um, whether his father was really a merchant. Actually, my father was what was called a paper son, in which um, he actually purchased papers to um, pretend he was the son of a merchant. And all of those yeah. could have been lost, huh? Yes, yeah, so what happened was... Um, there is in the national, well, there is under the government documents a rule that within so many decades, these documents can be incinerated. And some of the files were preserved, but there was a huge number, basically over 800,000 immigration case files that would have been destroyed if they were not saved. And the National Archives finally got into an agreement after our organization advocated for 14 years to have those files preserved. Really a great thing that your organization mm -hmm. did. And people can find a lot more by going to the Chinese Historical Museum of America, right? Yes. OK. Well, thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up, we talk about one of the most important places when you talk about the journey of immigrants, Angel Island. That's next. <laughs>